we're born inherently worthy. So you know how kids tell themselves stories where they're in their imagination and they're saying, I'm gonna be a princess, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. They have no limitations. But adults, we also have our own stories and they're full of limitations. Hello Alchemists, welcome back to the channel. We are diving back into the new series, Heal, Feel, and Reveal. I'm so excited for this series because this series has been designed to tackle the holistic aspect of life. I truly believe that everything is connected, our mental well-being, our emotional well-being, our physical well-being. So we're gonna talk about all of those areas in life. This series is created to give you clarity so that you can gain that extra momentum and focus and maneuver it and pivot it towards your desires, towards your goals. My passion is to inspire passion into other people so that they can follow their dreams and they can do what really ignites them, what really makes them happy. Okay, so let's just go ahead and dive into today's topic. Blessings, abundance, becoming more magnetic, tapping into that divine, feminine, magical energy. How do we do that? How do we access that? Well, the first thing we're gonna have to tackle is why do we have a hard time accessing that? Why do we have a hard time unlocking our creativity? Which is what I talked about in the first lesson. How do we unlock that creativity? How do we get past that blockage of uncertainty? In order for us to truly access that, to allow the blessings to come into our life, we have to think about what's stopping us from receiving them. So lesson one was about unlocking your creativity, hitting the start button and revving your engine up so that you can go for, pursue the things, really start to create and manifest your dreams. Lesson two was about releasing these ideas or ideals about what society thinks is best, tapping into your heart's truest desires about what you really want. And lesson three was about finally releasing those limiting beliefs and blockages that are not serving you. How do you release those limiting beliefs? You do the three steps. You identify it. Second step, you prepare and you plan. You create a plan and the steps for how you're going to get the thing that you want. You focus on that. That's way more important than the limiting belief and the blockage. And then you take action. That's the 50%. Action is so important. It's about embodying the thing that you want. And so we're gonna talk about that. How do you just do that? It starts with the decision. You have to decide. I think a lot of times people get caught into this idea or this web of waiting. There's a difference between patience and waiting. Patience is I'm doing what I need to do. And when it happens is when it happens. I will allow for the, the divine timing to play a role into guiding me there. Waiting, I think, is often something we do when we feel really insecure, when we're not sure. We like to say, oh, I, well, I'm just gonna wait. Let me just wait for the right timing. There is no right timing. There's divine timing, but the right timing is now. And it's always the present moment. It's when you decide. The trajectory of your life changes based off of your decision in that moment to maneuver it, to pivot it in that direction that you want it to go. So you have to decide if you're ready to be seen. It literally happens in the moment. That's why I talked about in my first lesson. It's not about confidence. You know, when you start something, it's not about being confident. To become confident in something, you have to build the practice of doing it and trying it out. You just have to dive in. Insecure or secure, it doesn't matter. So if you keep waiting, waiting for validation, waiting for someone to tell you it's the right moment, you're going to be waiting forever. Because the decision, the key, it's in your hands. So let's go ahead and talk about why we have so much issues with allowing abundance to flow into our life, the blessings to flow into our life. So we're doing the work, we're creating things, we're feeling passionate about life, everything's going good, and then it starts to come in. And that's when we start self-sabotaging and telling us it's too good to be true, or I can't do this, it's too much, I can't handle it, and we start pulling back. The reason why it's coming in, the blessing is coming in, the blessings are coming and are going to come in is because you decided they could. Whatever you focus your attention on expands. Sometimes we get in the moment and we're focused on doing the thing and we're doing great. And then it happens, right? We hit the next level or the next step or the next stage in our life where we're given an opportunity and we sabotage it. You got that limiting belief sitting at the back of your head. I have a lyric in one of the songs that I wrote that says, you have to stay true to your desires. That's a daily decision. Staying true to your desires is a daily decision. Every day you have to wake up deciding what it's gonna be for you. You have to go to sleep deciding what it's gonna be for you. If you're praying or if you're asking for help in a way that you're, you're hoping and wishing for things to work out, 
you might as well be begging. Because if you haven't already decided that you were going to be successful or you haven't already decided that you were going to get the outcome or you were going to get what you want or it was going to be yours, then that's where the problem starts. So you already have to start with the mindset, the abundant mindset that you're going to achieve it when it happens and how it happens is not necessarily in your control. Along the way, throughout our journey, we're gonna be redirected. We're going to be signaled to turn left, to turn right. We're gonna hit forks in the road where we have to make a decision. And your job is to listen to your heart's truest desire. That's why I talked about that in lesson number two. You have to get very clear about hearing your own inner voice, that authentic voice. That authentic voice inside of you is your authentic power. So why don't we listen to that voice? The way that I like to think about it, I grew up, I would say in a pretty traditional masculine feminine energy home. I don't know if you guys were told this, but I was told this by my father to be strong. I have to be strong. You have to be a strong girl. And I was told by my mother, you have to be a good girl. I was told both of those things by both of my parents. From the masculine side of it, when you're told to be strong, you start to suppress your feminine energy. You start to suppress your moods and your, your your wild, free, creative, flowy, divine feminine energy. Instead, you tap more into the masculine, which is the way that we go about living and doing things in this world, which is very problematic for women because that's not the way we function. We're very fluid and we're very flexible, which is great. It serves us. When we're told to be strong, we can't allow that vulnerability to crack, that creativity to crack, the moodiness to crack out and come out. And now we have all these suppressed turmoil of emotions that are sitting in the body waiting to come out. And it's causing this ongoing cycle of trauma. From the feminine perspective, we're told to be a good girl. Be a good girl. You have to behave. So then we end up becoming people pleasers. We end up letting other people make decisions for us. Well, I can only decide this if society deems it correct. You're an individual. You were given your own special intuition to figure out what you needed to thrive in this world. I'll give a small example. So people say, okay, you don't need a website, right? I love my website and I loved working on my website. And I was more than happy to piece it together because I have all of these beautiful things that I've created in one place where people can see it. And it's my website. People tell me, hey, why don't you do Etsy? Never wanted to do Etsy. Had no desire to do Etsy. Not planning on doing Etsy. If I can do things that are in alignment with my desires, I'm going to do those things. That stubbornness is also your strength. So if you got a little bit of that stubbornness that's coming out, that wants to kick out at the, at the, in the background, it's kicking, let it come out because that's probably your intuition, intuition redirecting you towards what's right. The best leaders, the most confident people, they've learned to listen to their intuition. They had very strong mindsets about what they were going to do in life. Just think about Prince. You know, he had a very strong mindset of he was going to be successful, he was going to be able to achieve it, and he had no interest in people telling him how to do it. We should take advice for how we can go about making things better in our lives, but ultimately, you have to listen to the final decision, which is made from the heart. We have a hard time listening to our instincts, and we have a hard time asking for help. The strong girl doesn't ask for help, nor does the good girl, because the good girl wants to be nice. She doesn't want anyone to think she's being too pushy or too bossy. A strong girl takes it all on her own. She's like, I'm just going to hand it all on my own. I'll do it all on my own. But asking for help is the same thing as allowing abundance to flow into your life, allowing blessings to come into your life. So if you have a hard time asking for help, you're also telling the universe, oh no, don't, don't give me a fun, loving, blessed, all the things that I've ever desired, dream come true life. Don't, don't do that. So we have to practice allowing ourselves to ask for help. How can we practice asking for help? Prayer is one of the ways. You can say prayer, talking to the universe, journaling, whatever works for you. I pray all the time. I pray about the smallest things. I even pray about my keys. Like if I need to find my keys, I'll pray about finding my keys. I didn't used to do that. I didn't used to pray all the time about everything, but I do now because I realized I was so used to thinking that I had to do things the hard way. And then it became a whole part of my system of how I live my life, right? I can't just do the creative career that I want to do. I have to fight my way out of it. I can't just go to school or go to college. I just felt like I complicated college so much. You just don't think to ask for help. The universe is just freely abundant. It's overflowing. It's overgiving. It has an endless supply of abundance. Anytime we think in terms of limitation, 
we're not going to have access to that abundance depending on what area you have limitations in some people they have i like to describe this when i do my married at first sight reviews they're like a 10 in their career but they're four in relationships because they have limiting beliefs around their relationship asking for help prayer journaling saying universe this is what i want is setting an intention so you're essentially telling the universe this is my expectation for what I'm trying to create in my life. Meet me halfway. You can also do something I like to call trusting, learning how to trust and build trust with the masculine container. So the masculine container, I'm going to shout out Mina, the Universe Guru's channel, because I'm such a huge fan of her channel. If you ever want to understand what the masculine container is, she has a wonderful way of describing what it is. Essentially, the masculine container, the best scenario for me to describe it is think of a husband and a wife. Usually the wife is in, in the family. She wants more for her family. She wants a bigger house, a nicer car, and the husband or the masculine energy in the family would go about strategizing how to obtain it. Also setting the limitations, right? So maybe he'll get a better job, but he'll also set, set limitations. We can't spend too much. Let's go ahead and contain that wild, feminine, creative, abundant, expansive, feminine energy. Let's just make sure we're living within our means. Some people don't have a very good relationship with that container or trusting the, the masculine container, trusting that they're taken care of, trusting that the universe is the ultimate protector provider that is there to give you all the abundance that you need. It's not a person, it's not a job, it's the universe. The universe gives you all of those blessings through different channels, whether that's the job, the husband, <laughs> the wife, whatever means it's coming through, the universe will allow those to flow through those channels. You have to learn how to develop that trust with the masculine container, which you can do that by the gratitude list that everybody talks about. Make a gratitude list, talk about all the things you're grateful for, recognize and acknowledge all the things that you're physically grateful for and the support it's given you, the support that this chair is giving me. I'm being supported or my car, right? It's supporting me, it's helping to take me to work. So acknowledge all of these, the physical, ways that you feel supported, acknowledge it. Another way for you to do that is to tap into that free flowing abundant energy, which takes me to my next topic. Abundance is free. Abundance is free. You don't have to be worthy of it. You're inherently worthy of it. We're born inherently worthy. So you know how kids tell themselves stories where they're in their imagination and they're saying, I'm going to be a princess. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. They have no limitations. But adults, we also have our own stories and they're full of limitations, full of limiting beliefs. But if we recognize that abundance is free, we never have to look or seek it. So the way that I tap into my abundant energy is I do what I love. I do what gives me joy. I do what lights me up. I do things that give me pleasure or help me to feel pleasure in my body are exciting to me, my passions. I try to identify those things that are exciting and fun to me and put an emphasis on that. In those moments when I'm doing what I really love, I truly feel abundant. And I have endless energy of abundance thanks to it. You know, when I'm doing things that I really love, I like to just pause and take a moment to just acknowledge to the universe, thank you for this. I feel so abundant. Throughout your day, when something feels really good, if a child gives you a smile and it makes you smile and it feels makes you feel good inside or gooey inside, or if you're eating a really good meal and it tastes so good and you're really enjoying it, allow that abundance to flow through you. Really get into the habit of doing what feels good for you can't express it enough. It's going to be a constant theme throughout all of my videos. Doing what you love, doing what feels good for you. Doing what feels good for you. Listening to that because I think sometimes we try out different things. There are so many teachers who are telling you do this or mentors who are telling you do this, do that, do that. And I was just always the type of person I'm like, I don't know if I'm lazy. What I'll do is I'll follow like a teacher or a guru and I'll listen to someone and then I'll lose interest. And I feel like that's my intuition telling me you've learned what you needed to learn up until this point, move on to the next, or maybe put it to practice and apply the knowledge and stop absorbing so much learning. I do try to go back and forth with that. Like I will jump in and then I'm like, my brain is exploding with information and I'm just like, okay, I, I need to start <laughs> applying all of what I, I've learned to get into the experience of it. So think about Oprah, right? Oprah's favorite things. 
Oprah is extremely wealthy, right? She has no, no shortage of things even though she grew up poor, but she always was so appreciative of the things that she did have, even though she didn't have a lot. And even as she's moved further into being really wealthy, she's learned how to appreciate even the really nice things she has. And that is a hard thing, I think, to maintain sometimes when you're so used to just having. I do notice that wealthy people, people who have a lot of abundant things in their lives, they're very appreciative, like, like almost obsessive sometimes about some of their things because they've built that trust with that masculine container. They trust that the universe is a protector provider. It will give them what they need. It, it's always there, it's always available. This is conscious consumerism. I'm not saying like having a lot of things is conscious consumerism, but conscious consumerism is about creating a relationship to your things. And I'm gonna talk about this in another video later on when I'm talking about your living space and the things you surround yourself with and sparking joy, which, you know, is so important that actually works, it actually works. The relationship you have to your things also helps to show to the universe and reminds the universe, wow, I feel so abundant. The universe gives you what you focus your attention on. So whatever you focus your attention on expands. If you say, wow, life is so abundant, I'm so grateful, guess what the universe is gonna be like, oh, here's more. Why don't you have some more of this, huh? Here it is. If you say, oh no, life is so limiting, I don't have a lot, the universe is gonna be like, oh, here, here's some more of that. It gives you whatever you focus your attention on. So one of my favorite mantras is more abundance, more love. Thank you, universe. I welcome more abundance, more love. And I say that because it's already insinuated that I am already am abundant. I already have a lot of love in my life. Why not have some more? Why would you set a limit on how much abundance and, and love you can have? Uh, that sounded weird. <laughs> But the, the feelings of love, like just feeling fulfilled with love, feeling emotionally fulfilled with love. Get ready, decide. So here are the, the questions that I wanna to prompt to you guys for this video. What makes you feel abundant and why? Really think about why those things make you feel abundant. Just drop into that experience of like this and this. Like I, I think about things all the time. This is why I love telling stories sometimes because it makes me remember and realize, or even journaling. Um, it makes me remember and realize how beautiful my life is. Even like the smallest things, how appreciative I am of all those little things coming into my life. When I go see my parents and I'm hanging out with them, I'm just like, oh, I love my parents. They're so adorable. They're so endearing. And then I just start thinking about it. And I'm like, well, and then my mom did this for me. And my dad did this for me. And then I just start coming out with a long list. And that's basically the gratitude list. I don't call it the gratitude list, but that's the practice of gratitude. I think I've just gotten to the practice of looking for things to be grateful or just feeling grateful for things or feeling appreciative of whatever I have that is is coming into my life that feels like a blessing. Being seen, I think is so scary for women sometimes, but it's just something you have to practice and you have to decide, you know, are you ready to be seen? Why are you waiting to be validated? This is your moment, you know, your moment to shine. And for women, it's especially important for our feminine energy to be seen because we literally glow in that space. Think about women who, let's say they have low self-esteem and they won't allow themselves to be seen they start to become, they lose their glow. They lose their glow and they, they diminish themselves. They diminish their life force because that's not what you're meant to do. Don't hide away, you're meant to be seen. You're meant to be praised, you're meant to be cherished, you're meant to be loved on. This is why healing is so important and doing that inner work is so important. You know, reflecting on and thinking about like the hurts and pains you've gone through is important. The journaling is important to, to process because it's hard to really access being seen when you have so much doubts and insecurities about why you can't do that. To be honest, for me, I would say the inner work is very important, but I would say simultaneously while you're doing the inner work, also do the outer work. That's why I'm creating this series, Heal, Feel, and Reveal. It's not just about, okay, I'm working on myself emotionally and I'm tapping into what makes me happy. I'm like, go for what makes you happy. Actually create it, like go for it because that's gonna help you to heal faster. I spent a lot of years doing like inner work, like focusing inwardly on things and healing. If I were giving advice to my younger self, it would be to do the outer work too. I was so afraid to like really put myself out there and do the things that I really desired to do because I was like, well, I don't wanna attract negativity to me, which there's some truth to that, right? If you put yourself out there with your energy, you're gonna be a magnet for what you're creating. Doing the outer work, the, taking those action steps and putting yourself out there, allowing yourself to be seen, it's 
it's gonna light you up. It's actually gonna put you back together. It's gonna piece you back together, all those broken pieces. So in the act of allowing yourself to shine, you're healing, you're healing. So you don't have to hide away. It's a back and forth. It's a push and pull. Allow yourself to go through that push and pull journey. Shine light on all of those areas, all the areas of your life need to be worked on. It does take time to develop different areas, but I think it's important to feed everything one morsel at a time. There are some areas of your life sometimes where it needs a little bit more <laughs> nourishment. You're more excited to focus on that area, which is perfectly fine. But make sure you're taking care of your mental health, your emotional health, and your physical and spiritual one um, all at the same time. They all fuel each other. What I truly want my series to focus on and help to generate inside of you and excite you with is following your intuition. You know, in spite of the advice the teachers tell you, you have to listen to, again, your heart because the heart is, it's the body wisdom, it's the ultimate wisdom that lets you know. The mind will distort things, but the heart will not. The body will not distort things. It's, the body is very honest about what is happening and what isn't working for you. And so I try to tap into it as often as I can because it's so wise and it really lets me know what's happening. As I'm doing this series, as we speak, I'll be up doing this stuff at like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I don't care. I have so much energy. I can just, I can just go on. And I literally wake up excited and with energy because I'm working on things that I love. I'm really starting to finish uh, those things that I've started and wanted to complete and that's what's blowing my mind. I'm like, I don't know why it took me a while to to get to this point. It was literally just a decision. I decided like I'm gonna be great. Like I'm gonna be that badass boss queen bitch. <laughs> I just decided that I was gonna be that. You don't have to wait. You just have to decide. Every time I, I do something or I engage in some kind of activity where I'm like, you know, I'm really passionate about it. I just say, this is the moment, you know, kind of like in the Eminem song that was like running through my head earlier. I don't want to mess up the lyrics. Okay. If you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? That song is so iconic. It perfectly captures what I feel when I like jump into an experience. I just tell myself, this is it. This is the moment. This is it. Put it all out there. And that's what excites me. <laughs> it's so crazy, but I don't want to live life like I didn't give it my all. I didn't put everything I could into it. Don't hold in all of those reserves. All of that energy you're wanting to put out into the world, just give it. I am a manifesto generator and we do work this way is when I get passionate about something, it like regenerates. I get more passionate. It's like it builds, there's like layers to it. So if you're a manifesto generator, you know about the human design, we regenerate. And if you're a generator as well, we like, we regenerate our energy. So the more passionate we are about something, the more excited we get. We build our energy out of that. I feel like everyone has the capacity to find ways to ignite that fire, that trust into their lives and really get things started and moving forward. For our next lesson, we're gonna be talking about and diving into the topic of organization, learning how to straighten out our priorities, I'm gonna show you guys my tips and tricks for how I stay organized. In a way, I'm a type A person, but I'm not a type A person. The way that I stay organized is I keep my process very simple. And I'll start talking about that in my, my next video. It's like simplicity, just keeping it really easy, keeping it simple. I'll talk about my organization tips. We'll bring up sparking joy because sparking joy is a real thing. Learning how to develop conscious relationships with our things and etc. I hope you guys will join me for the next lesson of this series, Heal, Feel and Reveal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe and comment down below. Share with me what you took from this and go ahead and check out the Dropbox because I'm going to list three questions in regards to the series that's going to help to ignite you to find that, to tap into allowing that abundance and the blessings and becoming a lot more magnetic in your life. How do we tap into that energy more? They're all the same thing. Abundance, becoming magnetic, becoming magical, divine feminine energy. They're all the same thing. So how do we tap into that beautiful, enriching experience and energy. I'm also currently doing a 20% off of everything in my store. I'm an artist. Um, I do prints and artwork photography. So I'm gonna go ahead and link down below the code that you guys can use for my website if you're interested in checking out any of that. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I primarily use Instagram for my professional life. Thank you, Alchemist. I hope you have a wonderful day or evening. Bye.